If you are a real estate agent and you are tired of cold calling, door knocking, paying for ads that flat out don't work, or just tired of not knowing how to generate leads, then this is the channel for you. We are four rock star agents who have come together to help fellow agents achieve financial freedom as well as location and time freedom. My name is Andy Hollis along with my partners Aileen Fountain, David Doran, and Tim Hollanden. Together we have over 50 plus years experience and knowledge in the real estate and sales and training industry and we are hoping to pass that knowledge on to you. So let's get started. If you're a real estate agent that is wondering post NAR, how do you communicate value in a way that gets your buyer brokerage agreement signed? Andrew Undem is going to share with us his exact process that I know is going to help you get more business immediately after watching this video. All right, Andrew, there is nobody in my opinion that does this any better than you. So this is what's going to be exciting is, is those folks that are out there and they keep hearing that they need to be able to communicate value in a buyer presentation. It's one thing to hear that, but it's a whole other thing to understand exactly what that looks like. I think everybody understands they need to do it, but they're not sure how to do that. So what's fun about this is as you and I have talked about this over the years, I know you do it on the seller side, but the buyer side is a focus that a lot of people miss out on. So if you don't mind, let's just start at the beginning. What does this look like as far as you know the typical meeting and just kind of go through your process if you don't mind? Yeah, I think we've all heard you have to showcase more value on the buy side. And it's been beaten to death on the seller side and our marketing proposal side, but how do you do it on the buyer side? You gotta show value. And I hear a lot of people say those words, but they're not actually saying, this is how you actually show the value. Right. So what we're coaching our agents and our team is how to show the value, okay? And before we get into the, the nitty gritty, the, the key thing here is you have to be comfortable, okay? Everyone knows bond and rapport is an important thing and how to make other people comfortable. You're never gonna make someone else comfortable unless you're comfortable. So look, you're gonna win through reputation or preparation, ideally both, okay? But you gotta be prepared for some of this and that's probably why you're watching this and you're subscribing to Jimmy's channel because you wanna get better. So when we're talking about a buyer situation, I like to draw out everything on hand. So I don't care if we're meeting at the office, we're meeting at an open house, I'm hanging out at my kid's swim meet and I'm talking to a parent. You have to be able to articulate the value proposition of buyer agency in, in a compelling way where they're gonna agree to pay you two and a half, three, over 3%. So that's a lot of money a lot of times. So this is a real conversation. Um, so when you break this stuff down, and, and also because it's a dynamic environment, you have to be fluid. Okay, so what I say here, you can use pieces of this, move it around, make it your own but you're not in a vacuum. When you're at the open house or you're doing a buyer consultation at the office, which is what you want, or you're out in the wild, you have to be fluid with this stuff. You have to be unconsciously competent and that's only gonna happen through preparation. So with those bases covered, if you're talking to a buyer, there's a couple kind of key things here. How does an agent provide value? Well, what you wanna do is you wanna draw out, here's everything that happens in that transaction, okay? Starting with, we all know pre-approval, right? So that's a piece. Then you have your home search, that's a piece. Market dynamics, that's a piece. Offer research, not making the offer, but researching what you might do for the offer is a piece. The components of an offer is a piece, the contract period, settlement, and post-settlement. So there's like eight or nine big pillars where you can provide value, okay? So I'm just gonna rattle these off, Jimmy. Because when we're talking about these stages throughout the buyer journey, it's your opportunity and a, dare I say, your obligation to provide value to that buyer. Okay, so on a pre-approval. Hey, let, me, let me say this, Andrew, because I know that it's hard to do it here um, because I, you, you and I have sat down and you've actually drawn this out just like you do with someone. Yes. Um, if we can, can you record that after this? And then if somebody wants that, we'll have it down in the show notes if they're watching this on youtube or if you have if we don't have it in there just email me and i'll send this to you would that be okay a hundred percent because what i'd like to do is draw it out i don't have my ipad today so i'll record myself doing this and you know what i did it right before the call this is what it looks like now you can't read my chicken scratch but if you put this on a piece of paper each one of these words is compelling value in real dollars so say the first point pre-approval so Jimmy, when you're going to buy a home, it's really important that you understand all the loan options and the different programs available. Here in Baltimore, a lot of times buyers don't know, they can get grant money, they can get tax credits, and there's so many different programs through mortgage brokers and banks that can unlock some value for you. So that's why it's really important to have an, 
uh, in-depth conversation with a mortgage person, A, to understand, can you pick up some free money? What's the best program for me? Should you do 1% down, 5% down, 20% down, 50% down, and really understand what type of mortgage product you're getting? And one of the things we do, one of the components of value we bring to the relationship is we guarantee our buyers the lowest interest rate. And how we do that is once you apply for a loan, we're going to help you shop that loan with other mortgage companies. Now, the loan officers don't love it when you do this, but my job is to get you value. So I'll get you the lowest rate and the lowest fees. See, time out. When you're talking about pre-approval, now we're talking about real money. I'll guarantee you I get you the lowest interest rate and the lowest mm -hmm. fees. That's mm -hmm. a component of value. And then you explain the way to get a real advantage when you're going out to buy a home is not just to get pre-approved, but to verify all of your assets. This is doing heavy lifting before you start the process because that mortgage loan officer, we're going to coach them up on how to help us convey to the seller how strong you are. And if they already have your documents, they have your assets and it's verified, we can close quickly and they can help us coach the listing agent on how to talk to the seller. Boom. So that's one pillar, okay? Pre-approval. It's not just, oh, I hope you can buy. I hope you're qualified. I hope I don't waste my time. It's no, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you get money, save money, get you the lowest interest rate, and have an ally on our team to win this deal. Boom. Now hey, we're talking about- Can I, can I add yes. something there? Yes. This is what I love is that immediately you go into- how the difference the differentiators here so when you talk about this you know and you say most buyers don't know i mean that's immediately you know that wording every word has value and by creating that situation where wow i don't even know this now you immediately almost pique their interest not just pique their interest but you've given them something they may not have known about the other thing i love the word unlock unlock value for you. So these are things like using those things, guaranteed lowest interest rate. Look, lenders don't always like this, but that's my job. I love the way where you, where you're phrasing all of this. And look, if you're somebody that's listening to this, that what you just did on the first of one of these nine or 10 or 11 pillars is more than 95% of agents speaking the value that they bring. And some of this, we do these things, but we don't communicate them. So I want to I'm gonna step back, but I just wanted to say, listen, if you're this is gonna be a video you're gonna want to watch multiple times because just in that one little thing that that first pillar that Andrew was talking about, there are two or three very critical words that you can use that will absolutely get you the opportunity to get more buyer brokerage agreements signed just right there. So I'll, I'm gonna be quiet as much as I can, Andrew. I get excited because this is, I know this is gonna be so good. Listen, stick around to the end of this thing because the way that Andrew closes this thing is pretty special as well. Well, Jimmy, it's like what our friend Sharon always says. And look, I didn't come up with all this off the top of my head. I find the smartest people I can. I kind of try to copy it, put it into my own language. But Sharon always says, showcase complexity, deliver simplicity. Mm -hmm. Show, yeah. So this, this process can be complex just in that first pillar. Oh my God, there's so yeah. many different programs. Can I get some money? Is this person going to be an asset or a liability? Am I going to be prepared? So that's what you want to do here. And you always have the consumer in mind. What my friend Alan Dalton always says is you have to focus on the consumer. By the way, Jimmy, you know this. He wrote this book. This is a whole book yeah. on what to do on buyer agency. It just came out. Yeah. I read great. it like four times. Yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. There's so many ideas in this thing that you can put in your presentation too, but I'm just sharing you kind of how I like to do it because it's just logical, rational, boom. Okay, so we got pre-approval. Now let's talk about your home search. Now I'm skipping the, the rapport steps of, hey, what are you looking for? Of course, you're going to uncover that. Right. And in our business, it's pretty easy. They want to move, right? They want to buy something for whatever their reasons are. Of course, you want to get their non-negotiables, their nice-to-haves, any critical dependencies on timing and budget. Okay, but now we're going to jump into the meat of it. Now we're trying to kind of teach them a little bit. We're going to be a professor here. So, okay, the first thing we got to do is got to lock in this pre-approval. Next bullet point. When you're searching for homes, how are you doing that now? Oh, I'm looking on Zillow, whatever they say. That's awesome. Hey, that's what everybody does. And they're not seeing all the off-the-market inventory. So totally do that. Look for homes, but you're only seeing homes that an agent has put in the MLS that's populating these third-party sites. A lot of times these sites don't have all the coming soon listings, which are homes that are gonna be coming on the market soon. We have to pay attention to that, particularly in a low market environment. A lot of our buyers, Jimmy, are saying, God, I'd love to buy, but I just can't find the right house. Well, that's because most agents are lazy. Hate to say it, but they're gonna <laughs> wait for you to find a house and they're gonna show up and hopefully collect a fee. That's not how we roll, okay? Because we fight to help build equity with our clients before they even buy. So the search process, 
you're going to see everything on the market. Then we have the coming soons. Okay. But here's where we've helped a lot of our buyers is all the off market properties. Did you know you can see every single house that someone wanted to sell that didn't sell? Those are called either expired or can canceled listings. We want to look at those. How about all of the pre coming soon listings? These aren't listed as coming soon, but we know they're coming. Some people call those pocket listings. We have access to all of those as well. New construction listings. Typically our builder will put one or two listings up, but really there's 30 or 40 there. Different floor plans, different lot sizes, even different communities. So understand the search process. That's why it's important for me to really know what you're looking for. And most buyers don't know exactly what they're looking for until they've gone and seen a couple, which we're, you know, we're happy to do. But always be thinking of what you're going to be searching for so I can unlock some of this inventory. Jimmy likes the word unlock. We're going to keep unlocking stuff for you. I love it. <laughs> now, as you're searching, you have to understand the market dynamics of what's going on. Okay, the market dynamics are just a relationship between active pendings and solds. So it's kind of nice to know if you're zeroing in on a specific town, a specific school zone, a specific area, what's the average list to sales price ratio, which just means are they getting full price? Are they getting a little more than full price? Or are they getting a little under full price? Historical data is very important because it's going to help us create a compelling offer. Okay, what's the average days on market? How long is it taking these homes to sell? Are there any closing costs in these deals? And we can look at the historical data and see what's going on in the market. Now, nationally, it's what you hear on the news. That doesn't matter. What matters is in your micro market, in this zip code, in this price range, if you're looking between five and 600, average days on market, list to sales price ratio, what's the month's supply of inventory, all these things. And I'm going to walk you through all that. But it's going to be really important to study this because I want my buyers to know mo more than most real estate agents by the time they're done. Because that's how you build equity. Every buyer wants to get a good deal. Do you guys want to get a good deal? Okay, we're going to talk about that. Two, once we, once we find the property and you see one you like, and look, this is a process of elimination. We try to eliminate as much as we can. A lot of times you can eliminate it based on price, based on area, based on condition. You don't like the pictures, the island's not big enough, whatever it is. But if we can't eliminate it, we're going to go see it in person. And if we can't eliminate it in person, you know, sometimes they smell like cat piss. Eliminate that one, right? If we can't eliminate it, we're going to do a little offer research because every good buyer's agent knows, always touch yourself, what every good buyer's agent knows is we get paid in direct proportion to the information we gather, not the information we give. So my job is to gather intel once you're interested. I want to know exactly how long has this home been on the market? How many showings are they getting? Why is the seller selling? Is there any critical dependencies for the seller on what they're looking for in terms of time frame, in terms of pricing? What did they buy the home for? What type of financing do they have? When they bought it, where did they get a concession? These are all pieces of information we can use and potentially leverage to get a better deal. Okay, that's my job. That's the offer research phase. Again, once we've identified something that we're considering. Now let's talk about an offer. And this is really important. I've done this so many times on a napkin. We're at the bar. Hey, I'm thinking about buying a house. I, I immediately go into the five components of an offer. Okay, so guys, look, when you're thinking about an offer, when you're looking on Zillow or wherever you're looking, when you see a house, a lot of times people say, oh, it's listed for 400. I wonder if they take 380, which is a fine question. But an offer really boils down to five things. Purchase price closing costs have you heard that term before closing costs let me explain it because you know and then I'll, i go into it hey that's transfer and recordation taxes that's your title fees that's you know you break down closing costs for people and i'll do it when i do my video but for brevity i'm not going to dive into that purchase price closing costs contingencies okay you're always going to do a home inspection you're always going to have typically a financing contingency, an appraisal contingency. That's my job is to protect you. When we get a house under contract, you have the right to buy the house. You don't have to buy that house. And keep in mind, the seller has one house to sell. We can buy whatever we want. We do not give our power away. So purchase price, closing cost, contingencies, deposit, and settlement date. Okay? There's five pieces to an offer. So when you're looking at homes, and I'm sending you some of this off the market inventory. What a savvy buyer, what our buyers think is not, oh, I wonder if they take 380. Hey, I wonder if they take 380, give us a $10,000 credit, give us 10 days for a home inspection with a $3,000 deposit if we settle in 21 days. Now we're talking. Now we're talking like a buyer who knows what's going on. So you have to understand that is the offer process. Purchase price, closing cost, contingencies, deposit, settlement date. 
bang. And you can break in some time frames in there too, 10 days for a home inspection, five days to apply for the loan, 21 days for mortgage approval. Okay. Once we get through that, how we submit an offer is unbelievably important because guess what? We sell 500 homes a year. I'm on the listing side on a lot of these and most buyer's agents disqualify themselves based on their lack of communication and how they professionally present an offer. I got an offer today in five different PDFs, no summary, no pre-approval letter. Even if that's the best offer, I'm thinking, man, I'll explain to my seller. I don't really know what's going on with this agent. I'm not sure if the representation on this side is going to be smooth sailing. So how we present the offers is very important. And what a great buyer's agent does is we package it up in one clean PDF, give them a beautiful summary, have our team involved, which is our verified mortgage professional who has all your documents. And we submit it over and we coach the listing agent on how to present this to the seller. See, unfortunately, we play a little game of telephone. I don't get to talk directly to the seller, but I get to talk to the seller's representative. And a lot of times we can influence that conversation between the listing agent and their seller. But that's black belt stuff. That's what we do. Hey, before you move on, because I, I don't want to miss this subtlety, like you were talking about the psychology of when when you're referencing, you know, great agents and you're touching and you're and to speak to that psychology a little bit, if you don't mind, because I think it's a subtle thing that makes a big difference as well. Well, what, we, what we're trying to do is lead someone throughout the course of a transaction and showcase complexity and deliver simplicity. And no one wants to follow anyone that they can't learn anything from. Mm-hmm. Now, That's if, right. if the client thinks they know more than you, and God bless them, most of them do. Most of my clients do until you can showcase Here's right. all these components of value we bring to the relationship. And that's just a little, you know, I guess the NLP style thing yep. where if you're looking at them and you're holding eye contact and you're touching yourself and you're nodding, you're you're delivering a lot of subliminal messaging saying, I'm the guy. Okay. Yeah. You don't want to go to battle with me. You mm-hmm. want me on your side, not the other side. So that's very important. And like Jimmy, you've heard me say this many times from, from stage in the talks is, What's crazy is they don't even actually have to believe everything you're saying. Mm -hmm. They have to believe you believe what you're saying. That's right. So if you don't deliver this properly, it could blow up in your face. That's why, hey, look, reputation or preparation. If they don't already know you, and look, a lot of our clients, they come to you, they've seen you online. They're like, just just show us the way. And that's great. But sometimes that's not the case. And it would be nice to work with more strangers and not just our sphere of influence if you're trying to sell 50, 100, 200 houses a year. You have to be able to get everybody. Right. And when you're in the red zone, and when you're talking to a ready, willing, and able buyer, and they're thinking, should we use this person? Should we not? Should we sign a buyer's agency agreement or not with them? You're in the red zone. Right. And when you're in the red zone, you don't miss. That's right. Navy SEAL mm-hmm. sniper, center mass. We've got to blow a hole right through them in a good way, in, a, right. in a way that's going to help them get what they want. Because one of the little right. lines I always sprinkle in there is, you know what my, my job really is? My job is just to help you get what you want and do it in a fashion in which you're going to say nice things about me on the internet. Ha ha ha. Now, I already, that's a little planting of a review there. Okay. You can, and you can stop anywhere and say that. So contract phase. This is where a lot of people miss as well, because administering, I got this from Alan, buyer agent, be aware in his book, how you administer the transaction once you have a contract, very important. So when we're now, once we have a signed contract, all the dates become live. We have to apply for that loan within five days. We have to schedule that home inspection within 10 days, whatever the contract stipulates. And each step of the way, our whole home services ecosystem is going to get involved because now we have the lender, we have the appraiser, we have the inspector. Sometimes there's multiple inspectors. Is there a well? Is there septic? Is there a pool? Are we talking just structural and mechanical? Do we need someone to look at the roof? I have these key relationships. And because we're administratively gifted and I have a team that helps me with this is we're going to be so on point that we're going to push this transaction forward in a powerful manner and while maintaining your protection throughout the contract period. Okay. And by the way, I know every single appraiser in Baltimore, we've sold 5,000 homes and I've saved every appraiser's number. So we have relationships and we can play this game if we need to. Okay. But most of the time, again, through the contract period, we're going to logically explain our situation. For example, Something's up with the home inspection. We're going to get a credit or we're going to have them fix it. 
And instead of them just saying, no, we're going to coach the listing agent on how to talk to their seller throughout the process. And then, of course, at settlement, one of the components of value we bring to that relationship is our title attorneys here at Home Sales Settlement Services, A, will guarantee the lowest uh, title fees, will settle anywhere, anytime at your convenience, and will almost always be able to get you a reissue rate. What's a reissue rate? Well, title insurance, the person who bought the house that you're buying, they have a title insurance policy. Most agents don't do this. You can call them and say, hey, can we get a copy of your policy? And it cuts your fee by 50%. I'll drive your closing costs down. That's my job. I'll get your closing costs down because I can effectively manage the entire real estate ecosystem. So guaranteed lowest rate, best loan program. I'll get you a discount on your home inspection. I'll find off the market inventory. I'll help you get what you want and negotiate like a beast. And I'll have you all the settlement charges less because we have volume. And if, and if you don't have volume, maybe your office does, or maybe your, your brokerage does. And then post settlement, you say, look, at the end of this relationship, I want you to know we're just consummating. This is a, this is the beginning and I'm here for you. So if you need a contractor, a painter, a mover, anything, you have access to our clients only home services guide. And that's, and that's how we, that's how we like to represent a buyer. So do you have any questions about what I went over? Oh, this is so good. This is so good. And see, what's what's great about this is you you literally just did this off the top of here because you've done so many of these. So talk to the person who maybe has not done one of these. What does that look like as far as training for your team? Is it role play? Is it laying this out and, and just practicing this? Or how are you teaching people to move from where they are to where you are or to at least start hitting in that direction? Well, look, if you're going to be a real estate practitioner, this is this is your job. Okay, so we need to know these things. And it's not just opening doors and showing property. And that's how the public views these buyers agents. We're all fee pirate scum. Okay, we're yeah. overpaid. That's actually not the case. But we let people believe it because we haven't developed the skill to articulate exactly what we're doing. So when you really think about it, and again, I'm, I'll draw this out for you. and We'll put it in the comment on YouTube. Right. We'll, we'll make sure they have a place to get it. All you're doing is talking about exactly what you do. Do you help people get pre-approved? You do. Do you help them search for properties? You do. Do you help them understand market dynamics? You do. The key is in each one of these bullet points, I probably missed 10 things. There's other little pieces of value you can put in there. And then the one thing that I love that Sharon does, now this is a Sharon thing, when he talks about, hey, real estate's about contracts and power players, and every real estate consumer should understand the three agreements that govern a real estate transaction. Yeah. There's a listing agreement between the seller and the listing agent. There's a buyer agreement between the buyer and the buyer's agent. And there's a purchase contract between the buyer and the seller. That's all it is. Now, I'd actually probably frame that up front, maybe before you even get into the pre-approval. Right. Because at the end, after you've shown this value, you say, look, typically how it works, have you heard about the lawsuit? Most people have, but they don't know what's going on. You just draw it out and say, well, typically all the money in the transaction, the buyer's giving to the seller because they're buying the house. And then the seller would pay the listing agent and the listing agent would share their commission with the buyer's agent. That's not going to be the case anymore. Instead of the listing agent paying the buyer's agent, the seller can pay the buyer's agent directly or the buyer can pay. But it doesn't matter because it's all in one pool. Now, in order for me to represent you, I have to have an agreement signed and saying, hey, this is my agent. And whatever number we put in there is the max I can get paid. So I always like to put in there 3%. Now, a lot of times, 96% of the time right now, and this could change, right? Because August is coming. The seller is going to be offering 25 or 3%. If they're offering 2.5%, I'll accept that. If they're offering 3%, we'll accept that. That's already predetermined. If the seller's not offering it, that's when we're going to have this conversation to say, hey, look, the max I can get is 3% and we'll work that out in negotiation. But just so you know, we can't go under two and a half percent. And then I just leave it at that. You stop talking. And, yeah. you, look, and I, you tell you what, I've gotten all, so I'm working with five or six buyers. I've, as I was telling you, Jimmy, I'm back in the scene. I'm back in the weeds. I'm taking buyers out. I'm taking right. listings. I'm enjoying right. it. I, I, I yeah. like doing this stuff. Me too. If you can explain that you're going to save them money throughout this process, because guess what? The most consumers, even if they've talked to agents before, they bought a house before, they've never seen this on a timeline 
with 30 things that you're going to do and you are going to do them. You're not creating extra work for yourself. Right. You're right. creating transparency. You're creating honesty. And the fact of the matter is you just want to get them what they want and hopefully have them say nice things about you on the internet because you're going to deliver some unexpected extras in there. You're going to find them some property and you're, ne- you're going to negotiate properly. Yeah. So this is- that's it in a nutshell. And there's a lot of different complexity Listen. to it, but Listen, this is the this is the thing, and this is what I love about this. And so, if, uh, is we keep hearing about how do you, that we need to communicate value. Well, what you did is just articulate a process to be able to communicate value. Um, so, from that standpoint, whether you're an agent that this is exactly how you do this, I mean, I would copy it almost word for word. But if you're someone who wants to add some things, maybe that you do, or maybe eliminate some things that you don't do, if you'll follow this timeline, this is absolutely going to to give you a upper hand on your competition. So if you're an agent and you're listening to this and you know there's other agents that are friends of yours that maybe are wondering what they're gonna do as these changes happen, or maybe you're having difficulty communicating that value, I would encourage you share this information with them. Watch this video multiple times, pause, go in there and write this out in your own language and in your own tone in a way that you have confidence when you're presenting this. Andrew, um, Man, I just appreciate your transparency with the industry. This is going to help some people. Um, and so, listen, if there's an agent out there that has a referral for the Baltimore metro area, how would they get in touch with you and your team? Well, we're easy to find. We're the Sure Group Real Estate. Sure Group's our team name. Sure Group Real Estate, anywhere on, on social media. I'm on Instagram, at Undum. Call, text, email. And like I always say, if you give us a referral, it's like Shaq and his prime in the paint. It's We're dunking this. That's exactly. And and let me just say this. As someone who has experienced passing that off, you know, and got the assist, he's absolutely telling the truth. So um, I appreciate everything, Andrew. Listen, I know you guys got some value out of this. Make sure you reach out to Andrew, let him know how much you appreciate it. We'll talk to you guys soon. Mm-hmm.